Hello, everybody. Welcome to the blog. My name is Daniel, and you guys look a little bit blurry. Let, let, let's fix that. Let's just let's just skip that. That looks better. There we go. Welcome to the blog. My name is Daniel, and today we'll be talking about judges' marks. Guys, I have a new baby, and it is amazing! I got the Canon Rebel T4i from the refurbished store online, and so far so good. I just got home two days ago, and I've been playing with it ever since, trying to figure everything out, and oh, I'm so excited! Yay, yay, yay! Um, but yeah, beautiful. Alright, so judges' marks. Now, we are all guilty. As soon as we get home from a comp, the very first thing we do, we throw all our stuff on the floor, we run to the computer, we type in that address, and we wait. And we watch. And we refresh. And to no avail. We're looking for those judges' marks, we're looking for those results. And the big question is why? Why do we put so much placement on the placements, as it were? The recalls and how you place in the final, what judges really think of you. It's human nature to want something objective, something quantifiable, something that we can point to as a barometer to gauge how well we're doing, how we're progressing. But looking for something that objective in a sport that is completely subjective might be a losing battle. So I'm going to go through a few results from one of my most recent comps to go through the thought process that happens when those results finally do come up. The little details that everybody sorts of zeroes in on and tries to make sense out of when there's really no sense there. But yeah, just going through the mental processes of going through judges' marks and then going through just how silly those impulses might actually be. So, starting off from the judges' marks that recall into the final, we're gonna go from small picture to big picture. Small picture. This judge, that judge, that judge, and that judge did not call me back into the waltz. That obviously means that they hate me. That every little bit of our waltz is just ridiculous, just disgusting, just gross, and we don't deserve to be on that floor ever. But those five did call us back. They might have seen something nice in us. They might like us. They might even love us. Hey, we like that. Good for us. We got five recalls. Yay. Moving on to the tango. Look at that. We got eight out of nine recalls. We got eight out of nine recalls. Who didn't call us back? That judge. We'll show that judge. All the other eight liked us. Why didn't they? Hmm. And then zooming out from the uh, into the big picture of the waltz tango. So we got 13 recalls overall. The cutoff was 10 to make it into the final. So the six that made it, 15, 13, 13, 14, 13, 10. We're somewhere in the middle of the pack. That's okay. That's great. We're going into the final in a comfortable position. We, are, we didn't just kind of squeak in there. So good for us. Yeah. So reality check. Judges that don't mark you into the final don't necessarily have a vendetta against you. It doesn't mean that they hate you. It just means that there are a lot of couples on the floor, and what you're doing either wasn't to their tastes, or they simply didn't see you. There are a lot of factors that can cause a judge not to call you back. There are a lot of factors that can cause a judge to call you back when perhaps you don't even deserve to get into the final. There, it's a very subjective sport, with very subjective folks who are making a very snap decision based on what they see right in front of them. So don't necessarily read a non-recall into the final as a vendetta or hatred from the judge against you and your partner. The other fallacy that needs to be blasted apart is that the number of recalls that you get going into the final is an indicator of how the final will go. The couple that gets the most amounts of recalls into the final won't necessarily be the couple that wins the entire thing. On the other hand, the couple that gets the least amount of recalls and squeaks right into the final could end up winning the entire thing. Again, it's a very subjective sport, and there are a lot of factors that can contribute in any given round to the placements. So don't put too much weight on who does or doesn't recall you into the final, and how many recalls you get going into that final. Just know that you got enough recalls to make it there, and that feels good. Now moving on to the final, and looking at the marks that each judge gave you. Let's look at the waltz. Bam. Wow two sixes. That means that they hate us. They just hate our dancing. There's no redemption in their eyes. We will just always be horrible and awful, and they will always put us last. But we got a first. Oh my god! 
They like us. They really like us. They... And then look at that tango. Oh my god, we got two firsts. We are on top of the world. They love us. They just think we're so much better than everybody else. Oh my god, we're just, ah. Uh, go us. We're just phenomenal in every single way. And look at that. In the tango, we only got one sixth place mark as opposed to the two in the worlds. Okay, so that's a sixth place mark. That's not good. Why? Mm. Now, again, judges' marks are very subjective, and in any given dance, they only have a minute 30, a minute 45 to mark six or more couples on the floor at any given time. They can only give so many seconds to each couple and decide on the spot how they want to place them in relation to everybody else. So, the judges have a very difficult task, and all you can do is make sure that at any given point of your dance, you're putting out the best dancing out there so that at any given point when a judge happens to catch you on the floor they're going to mark you well all you can do is keep up that consistency and make sure that you're putting out your best on the floor so that the judges have no choice but to mark you in that top three or number one or number four or whatever your goal happens to be for that comp now looking at the final tally how you stack up against everybody else and what your final placement happens to be for this waltz tango event let's look at the results Okay, it's not too awful. Uh, we got a fifth and a fourth. We tied under rule nine with another couple, so then that was broken by rule 10. Rule 10, not too horrible. I mean, rule 10's not as bad, not nearly as bad as rule 11. Ah, rule 11. I hate rule 11, except when it works in our favor, but I hate rule 11 when it doesn't. Urgh, grr, angry, roar, urgh. <sighs> These are our Foxtrot and V-Waltz results. And we're so close to getting that third place. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> Next time. Now, we all play these mind games. We all go from the recalls to see how many we got, to the final to see who placed us where, to the final results to see how we got placed in relation to the other couples. But the truth of the matter is that results will always change. Results are always subjective. Results are never going to remain the same unless you're just that good unless you really work on yourself to make sure that you get the placement every single time. What matters more is how you feel about your dancing, how you feel about your progression. Are you staying in the same place or do you feel that you're making progress? Are you constantly getting out of the quarterfinal or are you stuck in the octafinal? What exactly is happening with you and your partner and your partnership and your dancing? To you. How do you feel about it? Don't necessarily place so much emphasis on how the judges or how other people see it. As long as you feel good about it, keep on doing what you're doing and you will eventually see the results that you want. Now the skating system can be very confusing. There are a lot of different rules, especially that rule 9 and 10 and 11 that I just referenced in the video. So if you have any questions, hit up the description below. I will put a link down to a very helpful website that details all the rules and how the scores are actually tabulated and how results are generated. Feel free also to ask your friendly neighborhood scrutineer or any experienced member of your team who knows the rules to explain exactly what is going on with your results if you have any questions about them. As always, thank you for watching this blog and until the next time, bye!